And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, and the Spirit gave them utterance. We need a revival! You know, we need a revival! We need a revival! Woo! We gotta let you know that we need revival. This is your day to pray the Lord. This is your day. This is your day. This is your day. This is your day. This is your day for revival. Praises go up. The blessings, they begin to come down. How many of you can testify that the Lord is your light and your salvation? Of whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? That means nobody. The Lord is my light.
Come on, give the Lord praise again. When the wicked, even my enemy, came to eat of my flesh, they stumbled and fell. God had more power. He has more power than the wicked. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Again, we thank God for everyone who is out this evening. Praise and magnify the Lord. We thank him for giving us another blessed week, enabling us to come together one more time to praise and worship the Lord. We are not here of our own, but we are here by the power of God. The Lord has saved us from our sins, delivered us out of the hand of the enemy, and we're just here celebrating that deliverance. Anyone who is delivered from anything, they feel good about it. If you are trapped in an automobile that's been in an accident, and the fire department, policeman, or just a regular civilian comes and gets you out of that automobile, I believe you'll be forever thankful for that individual that delivers you. If you're in a house fire, and you can't get out by yourself. If the fire department comes, not bust the window out, and gets you out of that house fire, you have a different feeling about the fire department or the police. If you're in a situation and the police comes and delivers you out of that situation, I believe, and it's life-threatening, I believe you have a different feeling about the police department. So that's what Jesus has done for us. He has delivered us from our sin, delivered us from a burning hell, and now we have a different feeling about him than what we used to have. Many of us, in fact, most of us, in fact, all of us in here at one time didn't care anything about Jesus. We were out sinning, doing, doing what we wanted to do. But whenever we realized the need of having him in our lives, and he entered in, and he gave us some joy. And so we're just thankful unto the Lord for what he has done. And we're here to let you know that you can have and experience the same joy. The only thing you have to give up is your sin. And so, again, we just thank God for the joy that he has given us. The world didn't give it to us. Finances didn't give it to us. Material things don't give it to us, but the joy of the Lord is our strength. And so the Lord is the one who gave us the joy that we have. And so we're welcoming you on in. If, if you're watching this broadcast for the first time, we welcome you to the Pentecostal Revival Hour. I am going to give you more information about us. We are at the Lizella Pentecostal Church. This church physical address is 7545 Knoxville Road. In Lazella, Georgia. Lazella is a small community right outside of Macon, Georgia. If you happen to get a, a map of Georgia, if you look and find Macon, which is in the central Georgia area, and you look to the little bit to the left, you'll see a small dot that says Lazella. We're about five miles, five minutes away from Macon, Georgia. So if you're ever in this area, passing through, visiting, we encourage you to come on over to the Lazella Pentecostal Church. I want to let you know that all people are welcome to come and to worship the Lord here with us. I am going to give you the, the mailing address. The mailing address is 7697 Knoxville Road, Lazella, Georgia. And if you are watching this broadcast and you are enjoying it, we encourage you to call up a friend. Let them know that you are watching and enjoying the Pentecostal Revival Hour. If you need prayer or you need to be saved, we encourage you to call us. We have ministers that are there waiting for your calls. And the telephone number is area code 478-935-8589. And we really do, looking for, we do look forward to hearing from you. If you have been blessed by this telecast, call us and let us know. If you've been healed by this telecast, call us and let us know. Especially if you've been saved by this telecast, please call us and let us know. That's what we're about. We're about saving the lost. We're not here to promise you any material wealth. Jesus didn't come promising material wealth. But he promised everybody if they give up the sin, he will save them from their sin. And so, again, we just thank God for allowing us to be a light unto this world. Also, if you have a computer and Internet access, we ask that you... Go to our church website. The web address is www.lizellachurch.org. 
www.thebrotherhoodchurch.com. If you go to that website, you will find more information about us. There are several tracts that are written by the founder of this ministry, Amen. Apostle Albert Phelps. Go there, check those tracts out, and you will find out more about what we teach and believe at the website. If you desire to come visit us, the best way to get directions or instructions on getting here is to go to the church website, click on the maps and addresses page. You will see that we have three lo church locations, one ministry, but we're in three locations. You just click on the location that you would like to attend, then you can enter in your address, and you can generate a map, and that map will lead you turn by turn from wherever you are to here. So again, we just thank God for the technology that he has allowed us to use to get his message across. And we do want to let you know that we do have CDs and DVDs of these telecasts. And if you would like to have a CD or DVD, we don't charge for them. But we do encourage you, once you receive one, please send a donation. And that will enable us to keep production of these CDs and DVDs up. So the next one, we'll be able to get them. So again, we just thank God for what he has done for us in our lives. And we hope that this, is a, this ministry is a blessing unto you. Now in the congregation, are you ready tonight? To go on into your praise and worship. Devotional leaders coming at this time. Give the Lord praise as they come. Deacon Eddie Walton is coming in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. everybody being in the house this evening and if you will go ahead and get your Bibles at this time go ahead and get your Bibles Amen. come on and just lift them up shake them in the enemy's face and repeat after me this is my Bible I am what it says that I am I believe what it says to believe I come to the Lazella Pentecost Church to be taught the word of God. I will not serve the devil. I will not live in sin. Jesus Christ died for my sins and the blood of Jesus cleanses me from all sin. I am Christ like. I am born again. I have power over the devil in Jesus name. Amen, 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 and amen one more time. Let's give the Lord another praise. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. If you will, just bow your heads right where you are. Dear Heavenly Father, we give you the glory and the honor and the praise. We want to thank you for another opportunity to come into your house and to come before your people tonight. Father, we pray for this message that it is a word of deliverance. It's a word of knowledge and a word of understanding. And God, we're just praying for those who are out there watching this telecast. We pray first of all for salvation for the lost. We pray for healing for the sick. We pray for deliverance for those who are afflicted. We pray for the destruction of every yoke that are binding your people in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Again, we thank God for everyone being in the service.
this evening. Hope everybody had a wonderful day today. This is the day that the Lord hath made. And we are here to rejoice and to be glad in it. We do want to thank God for the founder of this ministry. We want to thank God for Apostle Phelps. He's here this evening. I also want to thank God for the pastor of this church, Pastor Ethel Phelps. I want to thank God for the pastor of the Messiah Pentecostal Church, Pastor Willie Wooten. I also want to thank God for Minister Denard working with the Fort Valley Church. To all the other ministers of the gospel, all the deacons, all the saints, all the friends. I want to thank God for the television listeners, radio listeners, television viewers. And so again, we just thank God for everybody. I don't know about you in the house tonight, but I, I enjoy praising the Lord. We notice that there are several instances in the Bible where people offer praise unto the Lord. You know, it's, it's a requirement. Especially, we know how David felt about it. You know, we are instructed to make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. He commands us to serve the Lord with gladness. We are instructed to come before his presence, men, with singing. Some of us still haven't got it yet. Hallelujah. But we are commanded in the word to praise the Lord. I don't know what some of us are waiting on. But we, we supposed to, men, we supposed to praise the Lord. It's not just up to the women. But men, we supposed to sing. And so I'm going to preach about it and tell you about it until we start doing it. So again, we are here to serve and to thank God for what he has done in our lives. We have a responsibility of men as being leaders. We're supposed to be out front with our praise unto the Lord. And so, again, we just thank God. You know, we know how David felt about it. You know, his wife didn't feel too good about what he did. But David said, that's, hey, David, that's right. That's all right. You think I did something today? Wait till tomorrow. Wait till I get another opportunity to praise the Lord. And another thing that goes along with praise is music. We know that there are some people that teach and believe that music is not a part of the church service. But we're going to look at some scripture tonight. And even naturally, music is very influential. If you look at most professional athletes, before they go into their battle or their contest, sometimes they show them pregame when they're in the locker room. And in most occasions, you see them with earphones or earbuds. They are listening to some type of music. Why are they doing that? Because music can influence you to perform above and beyond the normal. Most of the time, they're listening to something with a fast tempo because it pumps them up, gets them ready for the battle. Even if you look at our, our we know that we, we are concluding football season, but especially college football, the band is playing before the team comes out in support of their team. Music is being performed in order to get that team fired up when battle time comes. First of all, we're going to look at a situation of an individual in the Bible who was depressed, didn't feel good, had an evil spirit upon him, and we're going to look at what happened whenever a young man came in, didn't preach to the man, didn't give him a message, but all he did was play. Let's see what happened with that man. Let's look at 1 Samuel 16. 
1 Samuel 16, again, the title of the message is The Influence of Music. 1 Samuel 16 and the 23rd verse, it reads, And it came to pass when the evil spirit from God, see a lot of times we give the devil credit. We think evil spirits come from the devil. We see here that it came from God. I'm going to start over again. And it came to pass when the evil spirit from God was upon Saul that David took an harp and played with his hand so Saul was refreshed and was well and the evil spirit departed from him. Again, David didn't come in with a prayer meeting but he came in and played the harp and just at the playing of the harp, that evil spirit left. Again, it says that he was refreshed. He was well, and the evil spirit departed from him. Let's go to 2 Kings, the third chapter. There was a situation where the king of Israel, the king of Judah, and the king of the Edomites had come together, and they were getting ready to battle the Moabites. But the way that things were going, there was a drought, and the soldiers began to get thirsty, and they began to think that God had brought them out there to be defeated and to be killed. But one of the one of them began to remember that, hey, isn't there a prophet around here that we can inquire of to see what we need to do? And so it was. It was Elisha. If we come on down to the 14th verse, and if, in your spare time, you go ahead and read, the, read that whole chapter. You will see in the 14th verse, it says, And Elisha said, As the Lord of hosts liveth, before whom I stand, surely were it not that I regard the presence of Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, I would not look toward thee, nor see thee. But now, bring me a minstrel. And it came to pass, when the minstrel played, that the hand of the Lord came upon him. So here was another situation where the prophet of God, these three kings that came to get some revelation from him, but before God revealed something to him, Elisha requested that a minstrel, someone would come and play the harp. And whenever that minstrel was played, the hand of the Lord came upon him and gave him a revelation. Told him, hey, you're not going to be killed. Told him what they needed to do in order to be victorious in that battle. Again, you can read that whole chapter at your spare time, but I just want to show you how how influential music is. On the positive side, it's influential. Also, on the negative side, music is very influential. We live in a day and time where there are a lot of varieties of music out there, and I'm really going to deal tonight with Music that is in our, when I say our, I mean the African-American culture. If you find the average teenager or young adult in their mid-twenties or lower, they love music. Most of us in our teenage years and as we began to be adults, we, at that time in our lives, we love music. Most of the music that our teenagers are implanting in their minds among us is very degrading. We call our women out of their names. We call our black men thugs. 
We call our women B's and H's, and you know what that means. If you are continuously putting that in your mind, that you are one of these, you're going to start believing that you are one, and you're going to start acting it out. I would encourage any of our young people, if you hear music that's degrading you, our young girls, don't listen to that. You are not whores. Young men, you're not thugs. You're better than that. But if you continue to listen to it over and over and over and over again, it becomes part of you. And you begin to act it out. I remember in my late teens and early 20s, you know, I used to be out there, I used to listen to secular music. And we had groups out that would be talking about the police and F the police. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. I ain't the only one in here. Not realizing that the police is our best friend. If we didn't have law, this world, this society that we are in would be crazy. We think it's crazy now. But if we had no law, everybody would be killing everybody. We would live in a society of lawlessness. So I'm just trying to give you something to think about, especially our young people. If someone is coming out with a song that discredits you, and some of we just be bouncing to it, boy. It may sound good, but we don't realize what we are doing to ourselves. You know, as young people, we like to hear it, then hear it again, and hear it again, that same song, if it's good to us, we'll listen to it over and over and over and over again until it becomes a part of us. We want to act like a little thug. We want to sag our pants. We see the rap superstars. We want to get the gold chains. But I'm just trying to inform you how powerful this stuff is that you're listening to. Some of us in here, we were conceived off of somebody's song. All right, old folks. Y'all know y'all just listen to that Barry White. Marvin Gaye. See, that song helped get you in what they say, in the mood. We had that mood music. Some of us young men, we get real slick. We're going to put the slow song on now. See, I'm trying to prepare our young people. See, young ladies, you, you're growing up. You're going to be interested in the opposite sex. So when old knucklehead go to put his slow song in the CD player, I want y'all to be ready for that because that's coming. Young lady, knucklehead going to put the slow song on you. Young men, we live in an age now where these ladies, they are, they will make the first move. They're coming at our young men. 
And so I just want to let you know how influence, influential and how powerful music is. Come on down to us younger folks. Oh, keep sweat. See, I got something for everybody. Every generation, it was somebody out there putting something out. Come on down to y'all today, Maxwell. Some of y'all know who I'm talking about. But I'm just letting you know that this music is there to influence you. If it's used improperly, it can influence you in a negative way. Just like it can, it can influence you in a positive way. Now I'm coming on to the church, to the church body. Some watching the telecast, if you notice, hey, we sing in here. We praise God. We have the musical instruments. We have organs, drums, keyboards, uh, bongos, uh, rototoms. We have all of these instruments giving glory to God. I'm quite sure if David had access to the instruments that we had today, he would be making a joyful noise unto the Lord. This time we're going to look at some more verses. Let's go to 1 Chronicles. 1 Chronicles 15. First Chronicles 15. I had this meeting with our young people a while back in our, one of our gym rev meetings. I'm trying to prepare them. What I did was at that time I went and got the top ten songs off of the R&B chart. And we played them and we talked about them. This is with our teenage group. When we got the top ten songs at that time off the chart because <clears throat> some of the songs they had to interpret them to me. They were in English, but I, I didn't know what they were talking about. <laughs> but we noticed that every nine out of those top ten songs had some sort of sexual implication in the song. Nine out of the top ten songs at that time, songs that our young people, black people, were listening to, had some type of sexual implication. And so I was trying to let them know that if you keep subjecting yourself to listening to this over and over again, it's going to become a part of you. As I said earlier, if you be continuous, you keep allowing yourself to be called a whore, watch. After a while, you're going to become one. You're going to start sleeping with men, jumping from man to man. That's what a whore is. Men, too. They whores, too. Most times we look at that from, from a, a female side. But if a male is doing that, that's what he is, too. And so what we want to do is elevate the thinking of our young people to get to the point to where if it starts, you listen to a song, it starts talking about something negative, push it off. Push it away. You don't need anything, no negative thoughts in your mind. Get rid of it. But again, getting back to the church, 1 Chronicles 15, start at the 14th verse. It says, so the priests and the Levites sanctified themselves to bring up the ark of the Lord God of Israel. And the children of the Levites bear the ark upon their shoulders with the staves their own, as Moses commanded according to the word of the Lord. And David spake to the chief of the Levites to appoint their brethren to be the singers with instruments of music, psalteries and harps and cymbals sounding by lifting up the voice with joy. So David instructed the Levites, hey, get some of your brethren together. Let them get on the instruments. We're going to pray the Lord here. They were transporting the ark, and they wanted to praise the Lord. Now we know if you look back in, the, in your spare time, I'm going to give you another chapter that I want you to read. Read 1 Samuel, the 6th chapter. 
you will see where David, where the children of Israel had lost the ark. No, 2 Samuel, 2 Samuel 6. Children of Israel had lost the ark to the Philistines. And over a period of time, they had regained the ark. The Lord had allowed the children of Israel to be victorious in battle. So they regained the ark, and they were transporting it. When they first started transporting it, they put it on a cart. And so they went a, went a while, and the oxen must have hit a bump or something, but it made the ark shake. And there was a man named by the name of Uzzah. He reached up there to stabilize the ark, and when he touched it, he died. So they stopped the parade. They had the parade going. They stopped the parade, took the ark to the nearest house. It was a man by the name of Obed-Edom. The ark stayed at his house three months. All while it was there, Obed-Edom was blessed. David wanted to return the ark back to Jerusalem. So he read in the law how they were supposed to transport it. They weren't supposed to put it on a cart, but they were instructed to carry it with staves. So they went back to Obed-Edom's house, got the ark in the proper manner, the Levites went six paces. You know what David did? He offered sacrifice to God, and he began to praise him. Because the ark was being moved again, and nobody was being killed. So David brought the ark. He led the parade. We know in our society today, whenever there's a big victory in a city, they have a parade for the victorious. I won a ride as Little League. They won the World Series. And what did they do in one ride when they got home? Had a parade. Anytime someone wins a championship in the city, wherever it is, whenever the athletes get back to the city, what do they do? They have a parade. They have a big celebration. They have the bands playing. They have the confetti flying. Because they've been victorious. So here David is leading the parade back into Jerusalem. He's dancing before the Lord with music, with all his heart. But he had a critic, his wife. I told you about that a few weeks ago, so I'm not going to go back there again tonight. But... The point that I'm trying to get you to see that music was allowed. In fact, let's look at 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles, the fifth chapter. Starting with the 11th verse. 2 Chronicles 5 and 11. It reads, And it came to pass, when the priests were come out of the holy place, for all the priests that were present were sanctified and did not then wait by course. Also the Levites, which were the singers, all of them of Asaph, of Heman, of Jeduthun, with their sons and their brethren, being arrayed in white linen, having cymbals and psalteries and harps, these are musical instruments, stood at the east end of the altar and with them 120 priests sounding with trumpets. 120 trumpet players. And it came to pass as the trumpeters and singers were as one, meaning they on one accord, to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice, with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music and praise the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endureth forever, that then the house was filled with a cloud, even the house of the Lord, so that the priests could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord had filled the house of God. So whenever all of these singers and musicians got together, 
and they got on one accord, wasn't nobody there wasn't singing. Wasn't nobody standing around. See, you can't be on one accord and you got one standing around looking. You can't be on one accord if you got one that's playing the instrument and all of a sudden he stopped playing. The Bible says when they were on one accord, they were as one, meaning there were many people, but they were lifting up one voice. What God do? He showed himself. The priests couldn't even do what they were supposed to do. Because of the glory of God filling the temple. The same thing can happen today. If we ever get on one accord. If we ever get everybody. See, one person can block the whole blessing for the whole congregation. You know, when I was in sin, there was a sin that we used to chant. And the chant that we said was, if you don't want a party, take your dead A home. If you didn't come to party, take your dead A home. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Some of those used to go to the clubs. That's what we used to chant. Meaning, hey, we come to party. And if you didn't come to party, you need to get out of here. We come to praise him. If you didn't come to praise him, I'm going to let you fill in the rest. I want to see God do his thing. I want to see God bless us. But he's not going to do it unless we get on one accord. On the day of Pentecost, there was 120 gathered in the upper room. They all got on one accord. They had the same mind. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the house where they were sitting. But before the Holy Ghost came, they had to get on one accord. Before God would come in and do, we have to get. What you come here for if you didn't come to praise him? I'm letting you know your coming is in vain. It's not doing you a bit of good. You may be seated. If the world can make that statement I made about that chant, how much more shall we the people of God. When we was in the world, ain't nobody didn't, didn't in, I'm trying to say it right. No one was blessing us. But we still had an attitude, I'm going to the club and I'm going to party tonight. I'm going to party like it's 1999. Meaning, I'm going to party like it's my last time. That's the feeling that we had. 
we ought to bring that same attitude. Lord, I'm going to praise you like it's my last time. Every time you come in front, because you don't know, it might be. Every time you come in front of the Lord, you ought to praise him like it's your last time. Again, if we ever get on one accord with our praise, with our praise, God will shake this place. He'll shake this community. Hell, for what in the world going on on the outside? What in the world going on in that church tonight? Them folk got a, got the whole ground shaking. What be an earthquake going on around here? But that's what happened on the day of Pentecost. You may be seated. They had to all get on one accord. I'm quite sure no one of that 120 was there at that moment in time was looking around. No one was looking at Peter whenever the Holy Ghost came upon him. What in the West happened? What's going on with him? But everybody was on one accord in praise, and God showed up. I'm going to give you, I'm not going to read the whole thing. Most of us are familiar with the prodigal son. If you want to read it, it's in St. Luke 16. Man had two sons. One of the sons grew up. He was tired of being in his father's house. Quite sure there were some rules that he didn't like. And he asked his father for his inheritance. And he left. And we know that things were good at that time for him. But whenever he went away, went into a far country, and there came a famine in the land where he was. And as long as he had money, he had friends. Young people, as long as you have a little money, you're going to have somebody hanging around you. But whenever your money is gone, your friends all of a sudden going to get scarce. That's what happened to this young man. He had to take on, he became a citizen of the country. You know, by becoming a citizen, that entitled you to some benefits of the country. So after becoming a citizen, he was able to go and secure a job feeding the swine. Here this man, he was a Hebrew. Hebrews didn't deal with swine. But this young man wound up taking a job because of the situation that he was in where he had to feed the hogs. Times were so bad for him to that hog slop began to look like it's very tasty. At that point in time, he came to himself. He remembered that, hey, the servants in his father's house, they have way more than what I have right now. I need to go back to my father's house. So he began to make the journey back to his father's house. And his father happened to be outside, and he began to see, hey, that looks like my son coming. Whenever the son left, I'm quite sure he had some nice clothes on. I'm quite sure he had some nice shoes on his feet. He probably had some rings on his hand, and he had a big bankroll in his pocket. But whenever he was returning, He didn't have the nice clothes on. He had rags on. He didn't even have shoes on his feet. But whenever the father looked out and saw, hey, that's my son coming. His father didn't think about what the son did to him or how the son went out and blew his money.
But he thought about, hey, that's my son coming. So as the son began to get closer, the father began to run and to meet him. The son began to apologize, but the, but the father, he wasn't even concerned about the apology. He began to tell him, hey, go get the best robe. He began to tell the servant, go get the best robe. Bring some shoes and put on his feet. Bring some rings and put on his finger. Because my son that was lost, he's now found. Then he began to say, go and kill the fatty calf. And let us have a big celebration. Because my son that was lost, he's now found. So they began to celebrate with music. See, there was another, the other son, he didn't see the interaction with the father. And the other son. But he heard some music playing at the house. I'm quite sure he was out across, across the field and he began to wonder what? Why didn't nobody invite me to the party? So he begins to go to the house and he sees that the other son is home. Instead of him being grateful, He began to despise the situation. He began to go into the father and say, Father, why you didn't do this for me? I didn't go out and blow your money. Why you didn't have a big party for me? Why you didn't put, well, you already got, he the son, he already got these things. He already got clothes. See, if we're not careful, that's how some of us as Christians, somebody come in and get saved, and they begin to get blessed, and they begin to pray to the Lord, and we look, well, what's wrong with you? They get delivered and set free, because if you deliver from something, you're going you gonna to celebrate. That's right. If, you, if you're not celebrating, you're not delivering. Not we praise God for you watching the Pentecost Revival Hour telecast. We invite you to watch all of our telecasts. We're on Christian Television Network, Direct TV, Channel 376, Dish Network, Channel 267, on Mondays at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. We're also on TV station WGNM, Cox Cable Channel 7, in Macon, Georgia, on Sundays at 3 p.m. Listen to our radio broadcast. We're on WBML, 900 on your AM dial, every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. in Macon, Georgia. We invite you to be with us in our services. We're in three locations, Forsyth, Lizella, and Fort Valley, Georgia. We begin every Sunday morning with Sunday school at 9 a.m. Morning worship begins at 11 a.m. And our evening services are here at the Lizella Pentecostal Church beginning at 7 p.m. We're in Bible study every Monday night here at the Lizella Pentecostal Church beginning at 7 p.m. We're also in Bible study in Fort Valley at the Fort Valley Pentecostal Church beginning at 7.30 p.m. So tune in to the Pentecostal Revival Hour telecast in Jesus' name. Come down and the blessings come. Come down. Come on, tell us. Come down. Come down. Come down. Come down.
man. Keep on praising him. Come down. You can say what you want to say. But when we all get on the same pace, we all begin to say, thank you, Jesus. And glory to God. And hallelujah. Praise his name. You know what begins to happen next? The blessings, they begin to come down. How many believe in the house tonight? Oh, yes. One more time, come down. Come down. Come down. Come down. And the blessings. And the blessings. And the blessings. And the blessings. Come on, give the Lord praise. 